What is going on YouTube? One on the X room here. Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we have the Tesla Model 3 Performance and I'm very excited to see what this thing is all about. So come on, check it out. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe. If you like this video, hit give me a thumbs up and then just tap that little bell for notifications when I do upload. All right, Model 3 Performance. Woo. <laughs> the throttle pickup. Oh my God. <laughs> These little hills are fun. <laughs> it's just effortless. And if I want to slow down, I just let off the freaking gas. It's got the regenerative braking is amazing. Almost too much. I go to slow down. I'm like, okay, I'm still 200 feet from where I need to stop at. It's interesting because there's nothing in front of me. It's, you know, there's dash. You're used to having all your display right here. And it, it isn't, obviously. It's all right here. So it just makes your vision out really amazing. And as you can tell, I'm not yelling, screaming, because it is whisper quiet because <laughs> we got a ridiculously slow person in front of us we're going to do some autopilot double click down okay double clicking down okay let go let go <laughs> is Don't it gonna about, it will oh I'll, my I'll god touch Don't touch anything. <laughs> it's breaking for me okay. they just realized the car i don't know if you saw the screen here but it picked up a car moving now i don't know what it's going to do with a cyclist because it has to stay keep you in the lane so it shows a cyclist on the screen no hands. Is, are we creeping? You might have to go around. Oh, no. Well, no. It'll, it'll, it, there it goes. Figured it out. I'm like, <laughs> I just don't want to be that Tesla that hits a person. <laughs> All right. So now it's giving you the blue. You have to kind of give it a little yeah. torque. Okay. Because I don't have the, the thing on there. Gotcha. Um, so it's setting you at 38 miles per hour max. Yeah. You can wind this up to whatever. It'll give you five miles per hour over as the fast yeah. it'll give you. So this is a, a turn to navigate. Oh, you just turned yeah, I turned it. I got a little antsy. I was like, oh, no. It'll do it. Yeah, trust me. That was an experience with autopilot. A little terrifying. But let's have some fun now. <laughs> I got some turns here, and I want to see what these... It's a 4,900-pound car. So you would think, well, it's a, it's a hefty beast, and its turning isn't going to be as great, but... Nah. It's flat. So Please stay on your side so of the road. Low, it's pretty good. Yeah. And we caught somebody. But the handling is, it, there's actually some weight to it. You know, it's all electric. And one of the biggest drawbacks of some electric cars or electric steering in general is the feel. It feels numb. It's like you can't tell that there's any weight on the wheels in the front. And with this car, you actually have that weight. The steering wheel has some really good feedback through it. I mean, this is a tight road, so. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to do autopilot again. There you go. Let's dial that up to 40. There you go. Make that all the way to 40. Okay. So now it'll hug him. Now I think I have it set for four car lengths. If you click that left and right, it'll give you a car length thing. So this button here. Okay. So go left and right. See, that gives you... So now two it'll follow lengths. him all the way up to two car lengths. So it'll actually catch up to him. So this is a tight oh, road that this car has never been on, I don't think. And... It's doing a decent job. Like this is a pretty tight S here. <laughs> it did it no problem. <laughs> it will I'll go all the way up. It's mildly terrifying, especially when we get to the top here, yeah. when it's just, there's no guardrails. I'm curious to see how it navigates that. <laughs> Because it doesn't do so well with the big dips. All right, so it kicks the autopilot off at one oh, oh, my house. I'll keep so my. I, I want to see what it does. Oh. <laughs> it's not the greatest at that, so we're gonna we're gonna turn that off. And this is made for only highways right now. Still, still so we found the limit. Of, we found the limit of autopilot just then. <laughs> A hard diving turn. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Oh, but man. then again, why would you want to have autopilot on a road like this? Yeah, I, I right? totally agree. We found the limit, though. <laughs> so those of you that think you can put on a very tight, windy road like this, don't do it. <laughs> I mean, you could probably do it at 18. 40 may have been a little adventurous for it, but I tell you what, it did really well. Yeah. Despite that. And it keeps telling me of all the things around me. Mm -hmm. And it can tell that there's a vehicle in front. Yep. Yeah, it, I've... So this screen has changed. There was a bicyclist. It showed the bicyclist. 
there was a crossover and it showed a crossover, not an SUV. It actually showed a crossover. This thing is showing a bed. So it obviously knows that it's a truck. <laughs> we had an F-150 go the other way and it actually showed another truck going back the other way. Absolutely crazy. The throttle response, it's, it's so instantaneous. You have to be smooth on it. Otherwise you're gonna make your passengers sick. It's just, it's on and off and the regenerative braking so strong that when you let off it, you really notice it. So this is one of those cars that you absolutely need to figure out how that throttle response is and become feather light with it. Because <laughs> it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off. <laughs> you see a smile like something this, it's very benign looking in here. You know, there's nothing super striking about the interior. As far as the dash goes, there isn't really, I mean, there's a dash obviously, but there's no console. There's nothing in front of me. And I don't know, it, it almost lets you focus on driving more than any other car. Like, yeah, this thing's here, but I don't really look at it. I mean, I look at it now because it's new to me, but in general, I'm looking out the front and I can see so much. And because there's no engine noise, you notice the scenery. And I don't know if you guys notice the scenery around here, but it is absolutely gorgeous. So in a car like this, on a nice road trip, it's amazing. You know, the seats are crazy comfortable. So road trip, even better. The whole thing with the whole charging part is still where I'm lost. You know, this, this is a very narrow section and in the vet, you can tell you're close to either end. This, eh, I know where I'm at. If I wanted to, I could turn on the cameras and see how close I actually am. All right, so a lot of what I wanna go over inside this Tesla Model 3 Performance is really what's on this crazy dash. It's more of obviously an iPad, just a giant one, but it does so many different things. And while there's reviews out there that goes over in detail every little bit, these are some of the cool ones that I found. You go to this little car here, you see all the different settings. You know, your fog lights, your mirrors. You can adjust your mirrors, and it's not through this guy. It's actually on the steering wheel, which is kind of awesome. It's still, like, making you remember how we're used to doing stuff. Uh, lights, you know, same thing. You change the ambient lighting is really cool. Steering wheel lights, it shows, obviously, these little buttons here. So what's interesting is you need this little card right here, this little lock card to drive it. There's a little space down here that you actually have to tap it against in order for it to recognize and drive. Now, driving. So everyone thinks of the ludicrous mode and with the Model 3 performance, there's chill and there's sport. Sport is the angry version and that is what we are in. That's what we just drove in. Chill softens everything up, makes it a little easier. And same thing with steering, standard sport comfort. And comfort, it makes it easier for a lot of slow maneuverability. It makes it a good, nice, easy feel to the steering wheel. Regenerative braking, it's in standard. And standard braking, regenerative braking is absolutely incredible. You start to slow down way sooner than you're used to in a normal car. And because of that, you'll find coming to stop signs, you stop 30 feet short of the line and go, oh yeah, I gotta get a little further. So. Regenerative braking takes a little bit to get used to, but it is an amazing thing. And if you're driving hard to overpower it, you really have to be moving because of how strong that braking is. Stopping mode is really cool. I came to a stop sign, let completely off the brake, no gas, it stayed right where it should. Now, if you put roll or creep, obviously it'll do exactly that. So if you're in California, you do those California stops, put it in creep mode. Now, here's what I like the most right here. Customize, track mode. <laughs> You have your race presets. You can adjust how much handling you have or your bias between your front and rear wheel. Obviously, to make it more fun, you're going to put more rear wheel. Uh, it's 50-50 split really beautifully from the turns that I took at the speed that I did. It felt great. Stability assist, you can adjust that, obviously, make it a little more tail happy, if you will. And then again, regenerative braking, it's at 100, so it's very, very strong. This is the fun part. Drift preset. Yes, if you want to drift this car, it has settings for that. And your balance obviously puts the bias all the way to the rear. And because this car is, you know, electric and the throttle and the torque is instantaneous, drifting is, I would say a breeze, but it's real simple because you have all that torque right away. Drift preset. How awesome in a car that is 
seen as sort of a daily driver. Autopilot was one of the most cool features while I was driving. You know, if you double tap the stock here down, it'll set up your autopilot. And what you can do is you can then adjust the speed that you want to set your autopilot to. And you can set the distance to the car in front of you if you want two car lengths, three, four. So then you have navigation. It's pretty similar to a lot of other features in cars with navigation. I do think this infotainment, as far as navigation goes, is very intuitive. Safety, service, all that good stuff. Software, so apparently what happens with this car from what the owner told me, it'll do firmware updates because it's linked to the mothership, if you will, of Tesla. It'll always get those real-time updates. It's incredible. Something I wanna point out that was really cool is this entertainment. You're sitting, charging, you know what? I wanna watch some TV. <laughs> it's got Netflix, Hulu, Disney, YouTube, Twitch, all that good stuff. Or you go to the arcade, you go to the arcade and <laughs> you have pretty much an Xbox controller. You can play video games and not just like really old crappy ones, Fallout, backgammon, not exactly exciting, but racing, chess. <laughs> but these are legitimate games you can play while your car is charging. You might be like, okay, well, if it's charging, is this really gonna be a good thing? Yeah, it's got those supercharged stations you can go to that are Tesla only at the moment. And what that does, it just obviously charges your car a lot faster and you get to do something while you're waiting. I love that he put that in here. The touchscreen is amazing. It does it so quickly. Everything is super responsive. It gives you all the information at your fingertips. And you know, I was rather skeptical of how this was gonna be. I kind of thought it'd be more, oh, this is a cool feature, is it really useful? Everything in here is uh, very usable. This interior isn't too much. It's as minimalistic as you can get and it's finished rather decently. I actually think even though there are some plastics around here, it's fine for what this car is meant for and the technology that's in it, that's what you're paying for. The interior is nice enough that everything else plays up to it. Something else I wanna point out here that's really awesome is the climate controls. As you can tell, there's you can't see the vents. The vents aren't very obvious. So what do you do with them? So you hit the little fan button. If you wanna make the flow wider, you can just adjust it on the screen. You can hear them moving. If you want it more on your face, just swipe up. If you want it more down low, swipe down. If you want a more concentrated blast to your face, squeeze them together. Rotate up and what's cool about this screen is it's very easy for the passenger to adjust these controls. <laughs> it's so cool, super intuitive, very easy to use. <laughs> Tesla's I think won me over a good bit. A lot of the features in here are fantastic. So I went into this Tesla Model 3 with kind of an open mind. Some of the reviews I watched and read about this car was, you know, was simplistic and it was sort of okay, the fit and finish was okay, and they use those phrases in a negative light, and to me, after driving it, I kind of like the simplicity of it. You know, there's nothing super extravagant as far as the inside goes. The dash, which is not where it normally is, is super intuitive, really easy to use. It gives you exactly the information you need to know. I mean, to take a car, and then have one in front of you and it be shaped similar to the car in front of you or truck, that to me is a level of detail that, you know, says that the electronics and the software that this Model 3 has really sets the bar for other electric cars. I was very impressed with the way the Model 3 performance handled, accelerated, and broke. It, the brakes on it, because of the regenerative braking, are crazy strong. I had to push it a decent amount to not have the regenerative braking be the only braking power that I had to actually need to use the brakes. I've come to stop signs 40, 50 feet short because the regenerative braking stops me. I'm like, oh wait. The handling, that was a very tight road we were on and it was pretty quick on the switchbacks 
and the steering felt precise. There's a decent weight to the steering wheel, which again, with electric steering, is hit or miss depending on the company, depending on how they have that dialed in. And the Tesla is very dialed in. You know, it's a 4,900 pound car, but because the batteries are way low, the center of gravity is where it needs to be. Not only that, the owner also put springs and lowered it a good bit. He put a different set of rims. The Michelin tires are great tires. So it's lower, it's more stiff. And honestly, if I, I wonder what the original felt like, because if this is more stiff, how plush was the original one? Because it was so smooth. We went over a bunch of bumps and it soaked it up seamlessly. Anytime you put springs on a car, usually it starts to make the ride a little rough. Not the case with this Tesla. I'm blown away. Uh, the technology that's in it, the way it drives, the power. Oh my God, is the power intoxicating. So I've heard that Jomo was put in here from Elon because someone complained about it. Jomo, whenever you open the door or change the setting as far as like the cruise, cruise control, the autopilot, it'll chime. Well, those chimes are crazy loud. And as I mentioned, people use this as a car for their kids and everything else. If they're sleeping, those chimes are gonna wake them up. So Joe mode fixes that. He put that in, algorithm, installed it, firmware, there it is. So anybody that owns a Tesla, if you don't like something, respond to them. Apparently the customer service is great, especially if Elon is gonna go in there and change it for you. I had a blast driving this. I can't thank Chuck enough again for letting me drive another one of his beautiful babies. What an experience. Electric cars are obviously coming and Tesla, especially with their software, is ahead of that. The styling, it's vanilla <laughs> to me. It's not the most strikingly beautiful thing, but is by far not ugly. You know, it, it, the outside matches the inside. It's very functional. And from that case, from that standpoint, it'll look good, right? So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I had a blast driving an electric car for the first time. You know, I rode a bike that was electric. Well, here we go. Now we're in the cars. So with that, you all have a good one. I'm out.